and it All right, Marianne, I see you are here. Can you hear me? I don't know if my mic is working. Okay, Whew, good. I had problems with that. Okay, so I'm going to get all these going here. Uh, it'll take me a second. Mary and I will start talking in just a minute. I just got to get these links out. Okay, Facebook group. It's right there. Oops, I'm not sure. I wish I could put music or something on. Okay, I've got two people on YouTube. Feel free to let me know who you are and that you're here because I don't, I, I can't see you. And I'm not adept enough to know what's <laughs> monolithic of that stuff, so. Please feel free to tell me you are here. I am just putting out our announcements so we can get some people coming on here. Just putting one on our Facebook group and I'm about to put one on Twitter. Okay, whoo, whoa, we got more people. More people joined. <laughs> so um, we're gonna do things a little differently this time on Podbean. We're not just gonna let everyone come on and um, start talking. Um, unless there's not a lot of people, then I'll do that. So right now we could probably all talk if you wanted to talk. Um, what often happens is we usually get like, I think we get like 30 people at a time and that's a lot of people to be talking at once. Hi, Rebecca. Um, so if you want to talk, go ahead and call in on pod. If you're on pod, I mean, on YouTube, you can't really do that, but, um, call in and I will answer your call. I'm just putting out our information on, um, on Twitter and Facebook so that people can come join. And so I will stop ignoring you in just a second. <laughs> wish that there was a way that I could start lives and get a link right before I start. I don't know if there is on Podbean. There isn't. Um, but if I could start lives, whoa, what's happening there? And then, um, get the link out ahead of time, but I can't do that. Oops. Oops. Okay, so that's out there. Is it maybe? No, now it is. Okay, all done with that. So I am going to pull up our character announcement because we have some fun things to discuss. Yes, I, I don't, I think I'm kind of digging that cast. Remember, if you actually want to talk to me, and have a conversation, um, you got to call in on Podbean. If you don't know how to do that, tell me in the chats and then, or in the Podbean chat, and I will click on your name to um, add you in so you can chat with us. So I think, where do I want to pull it up? I've got so many different options to pull up from. All right, so we have, does anyone else, did anyone else pick up on the fact that we lost Theo James, but we got Ben, is it Ben Lloyd, who is also from Divergent? <laughs> that made me laugh. I don't know, maybe I'm just reading into things. 
but I, I left one new message. <laughs> so we have, we haven't really lost the luster yet. So we see that um, she has two. Charlotte has two new love interests. I'm sorry. I'm trying to pull up the list so I know exactly who I'm talking about here. Um, and we posted it in our group. I don't know how you. Some of you guys have heard. I, most of you are probably from the Facebook group. All right, casting news. Here we go. So we have. And I wish I knew like the background of each of the characters. So we've got Annie Reed, of course, is coming back. Rose Williams, Kate Ashfield, Crystal Clark, Jack Fox, um, and Lily Sarkovsky, Turlo Coventry. And those are all ones we already knew. So on our page, we already did the welcome back appreciation posts. But is anyone else unbelievably excited that Charlotte Spencer's coming back? I am so glad Esther's going to be back. Hi, Sarah. I, I love her. She's my favorite character. I don't know. I might get stoned for this, but I kind of like her more than Charlotte. Maybe that's just me, but I love Esther's character. Um, and then we also have Kevin Eldon is coming back as Mr. Hankins. And honestly, who else could play Mr. Hankins than Kevin? I don't, I don't think there is anybody. Yes, I'm glad, Sarah, that you're excited that he's going to be back. You, you know, Lauren, I don't know. We might still get Babington back. I think that's still a possibility. I think that they haven't announced everybody. I think they've only announced main cast and the ones we had them. And I mean, honestly, if you look at the Twitter complaints and you look at all these responses, I think what people were most concerned about was a love interest for Charlotte, which is kind of sad. But um, I think that uh, they answered those questions in the announcements. So I think we will see some of the, the return cast coming. And I think if Charlotte's there, if Esther is back, I think... Babbing has to be there. If not physically, he's got to be there in, in words. I imagine Esther will have some little anecdotes to say about married life with Babington because there's no way they got divorced. That just, that didn't happen. So, um, yeah. And I, I agree, Mary and lady, lady Susan, she was the one who kind of gave us the indication that, um, she was going to be back, right? She was one of the first ones. And I think she's going to be the one to save Sanderson in the end, because there's no way that they are going to, you guys know how I feel about the Eliza. Sydney situation. <laughs> it's horribly sad. Um, hey, Rebecca, I'm glad that you agree about Esther. I'm glad I'm not alone in that. <laughs> so then no one has a reason to be mad at me. Yeah, the Lorraine, Marianne said that um, Lady Susan uh, was saying that, yes, yeah, she'll, she based, she didn't say that, but she hinted that she was going to be back on that British morning show on Lorraine. <laughs> I'm glad, Sarah, we all feel the same with Eliza and Sydney. I have to be careful to say your comments that I'm responding to because when I when this replays for the people who can't be on here, they're not going to have an idea what I'm responding to unless I say the comments out loud. Lauren says, Sanderson account on Twitter did name all the returning cast. Maybe more will be back in season three. Um, the Sanderson, they did name all the um, main returning cast. Cause I saw that too. They had, there was the same, the same listing that PBS masterpiece gave us. That doesn't mean this is a complete comprehensive list of everyone returning. It means that these are the main ones. So that might mean that Babington, rather than being a main character, this, the next two seasons, he'll be a side character. He'll appear now and then likely with, with Esther um, when she comes back from, or when they come back from wherever. I think Esther is probably going to be back in Sanditon and Babington is probably going to remain in London. So I think that he might come back and forth. Um, <laughs> spread QI. I wish I knew what your first name was, but she says, ugh, Eliza. Absolutely. Oh man, how much do we hate her? <laughs> Esther and Sydney were the most complex characters. I'll give you that. But I think, I think what they did in the original series, though, I think that they gave enough room that any of the characters could be really, really interesting. I think that there's a lot of room for Arthur to be really interesting. I love Arthur, man. I love that man. I love how Turlo plays him. I love how quirky he is. I love how he went from kind of, um, actually he appears first as like this happy-go-lucky kind of guy. Or I mean, on the opposite of that, I mean, when he first comes on, he's like, let's get out of this howling gale. And he's very nervous. But then he goes on to be this guy that we all love. And so he and Diana kind of switch, but I, they, the writers gave so much room for all of them to be really, really dynamic and complex, I think. 
Marianne says, I was surprised about Diana, although Alex Roach just had a baby in real life. She did. So I think she's another one who will come on at a later time because honestly, I don't know how they're going to do a workaround with um, Arthur, but no Diana. Unless something, oh man, I don't want to think, I don't want Sydney to die either. <laughs> I'm so torn on that. Um, so unless he, uh, unless something happens to Sydney and Arthur is convinced by, I would assume Tom to, um, to come and take, not take his place, but to sort of have more of a solid role. And Diana can't really do that. Or maybe her and him and Diana have a fight and Diana decides to say, well, he decides to go back. I, I don't know, but I don't know how they're going to work with those two separate. She's too connected to him. Also, Dr. Fuchs is going to be back. Adrian Scarborough. I'm pretty excited about that one too. So let's get back to the newbies. Who's coming? I'm trying to look in this article. I was hoping that I'll be up front. All right. So Alexander Colborn, who is Ben Lloyd Hughes. He's the guy from, you think they'll kill Sydney off? Um, ben Lloyd Hughes is the guy from Divergent, from the Divergent series. He played Will. Yeah, I know, Marianne. I think that was my first guess is they'll kill him off. But, I mean, I still love Sydney. I don't want him to die. I just don't want him to be connected to Eliza forever because that would just be so sad of a life for him. And I would not, I don't want that for him. <laughs> I, I want him to thrive and do well. But how is he going to get out of that Eliza engagement unless he's killed off? Which would just be, and I think, honestly, I think that'll wreck Charlotte too. Maybe that's part of the dynamic that they're throwing in there is that, because, I mean, Charlotte, obviously that last scene, she loved him still. And she let him know that she loved him still. And he let her know in his own way that he loved her still. So him dying, even though he was engaged and married to someone else, that would wreck Charlotte. So, I don't know, maybe that's part of the dynamic that they'll throw in there. That would just be, one, I think that's too easy. But two, I think that it would just be really sad. Um, Marianne says that her thought is that is why she'll come back to Samson. Oh, for the funeral. That was my thought too. But I was convinced by Janice who cannot be here today. She is, she's at church. We started a little early. So, um, she, she doesn't want to kill Sydney off. So she kind of convinced me that maybe, maybe they'll do something different with him, but I don't see another way out because if he's not with Eliza, he should be with, with Charlotte. So I think killing him off is probably the only option. Lauren says, I don't want them to, but I think they will so everyone can move on. Otherwise, people will keep thinking he'll come back in the end. Um, Sarah agrees with both Marianne and Lauren, and so does um, Spread QI. If you want me to say your real name, you can give me your real name instead of just saying your, your online name. Sorry about that. Lindsay. Lindsay. Okay. So, Lindsay, all the Spread QI stuff has been from Lindsay. And I think, too, like... Someone had asked on our page, and um, if you are here from Twitter, you might not know about our page, but our Facebook page is the Sanditon Chronicle Sanditon Family Fan Club. And someone had asked, or maybe it was on our YouTube channel, they had asked this, but um, they had said, well, maybe maybe Theo will come back in the end. And at first, you know, I kind of held out hope for that one because I, I knew ahead of time that he wasn't going to come back. Um, so I was kind of holding out hope that he was going to come back for an instant, for a moment. Uh, I think he was pretty firm on that, but I think that my original thought anyway was that, well, maybe maybe he'll show up for a cameo in the end. You know, like at the end of shows, um, someone has left the show, they'll come back in the very, very last episode for just kind of like a, to close it all up together. You know, that happens a lot. I don't know if it happens so much in British TV, but it does a lot in American TV where they do that. So I kind of thought maybe something like that. But the fandom really turned on Theo in a really ugly way. And so I think that that eliminated any, any even shred of hope in any way whatsoever of him even engaging with the fandom anymore. But certainly, um, certainly with coming back. Because, I mean, I wouldn't want to do that either. He turned first, honestly. I think that his, uh, Lindsay said he turned first, honestly. Um, uh that's really long numbered um, handle you have there, VII2922. I'm only going to say that part of it. If you want me to say your real name, you can say that. I'll get to your comment in a minute. But I want to address what Lindsay said where she said he turned first, honestly. I think that his um, his announcement was pretty insensitive. I don't think it was mean. I don't think it was cruel. I think it was just insensitive. But honestly, talking to his agent beforehand, he the reason for that is he had already moved on. And I think for us, 
I mean, I was pretty upset that he wasn't coming back. I'll be honest. I was upset. I wanted Sid Lott. Who didn't want Sid Lott? If you did want Sid Lott, I wouldn't say it out loud for you because <laughs> you are outnumbered. Um, but I was pretty upset he wasn't coming back. His statement was cold. It was very detached and it was very insensitive to the fandom. I will, I will grant you that. It was pretty insensitive. Um, I do think, though, that for us as the fandom, Sanditon has never been a memory. Sanditon has never been far from us. It's, I mean, we binge watch it. It's, we, we campaign for it for two years. It's always been there for us. And I think it's hard to, like, even when I was interviewing some of the cast members, it was hard to remember when I asked them about facial expressions they made and the ways they looked at the camera. It's hard to remember that they f ended filming over two years ago. They ended in what? I think they ended it in early 2019. So like January, 2019. I thought that's what Ollie might've said. I can't remember now, but two plus years since they've ended it. He has genuinely moved on. Sydney Parker is no longer someone for him. So while I think he could have been more kind in to the fandom that fell in love with him, I honestly think his statement was a lot of him just not thinking it was, no, I'm, why would I come back? That's, that's done for me. It's all done. So no, I'm, of course I'm not going to come back, which hurt us. But I think honestly, he wasn't thinking about it. But I think that people, I, I think we can probably agree that the fandom turned a little bit meaner to him than he was to us. Um, so VII2922 says, when Jack posted his script, I made out Shannon. Thank you. <laughs> Shannon says, when Jack posted his script, I made out that the first screen was set between Antigua and a dance with Charlotte. Ooh, I'm so glad that we're going to go back to Antigua. That's exciting. When Jack Fox posted a script? Well, of course, Jack. What other Jack? <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Man, you are eagle-eyed. Or maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention. I don't know. Which is very possible. That's cool. I wonder... So that must mean that we're going to get a little bit more of Georgiana's... Um, her background. Alright, so... For those of you... Who may be listening to this later. We only have a few listeners on right now. And by reminder, if any of you want to talk, um, instead of chat, call in or write in the comments you want to talk, and then I will I'll add you into one of the speakers. Lauren says yes, and Lennox was in the first couple of pages. Who's remind me who Lennox is? I feel like I should know that. And I feel like I'm gonna be like, what? You don't know that? Uh, but for those of you that have not H what? Actor is Tom. Oh, Colonel Lennox is one of the new leads. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So uh, Lennox was in the first couple of pages, and I was just going back to that list. Um, so we have Alexander Colburn, who's been Lloyd Hughes. He is. Oh, yeah, maybe he does know Sidney Shannon, Colonel Lennox. Um, but Alexander Colburn is a mysterious resident with a complex family history. So does that. I'm guessing that means that he has moved. So maybe Sydney is sending people to, to Sanditon to live. Uh, but it says he is in stark contrast to the self-assured war hero, Colonel Francis Lennox, who is played by Tom Weston Jones. Has anyone seen, I've seen Ben Lloyd Hughes and other things. I've seen him in the Divergent series. That's the only thing I've seen him in. Um, but has anyone seen Tom Weston Jones in, the, in anything? He is going to play Colonel Lennox. Marianne said the announcement said the militia will make Sanditon at the base. Yep. <clears throat> but I think for Alexander Colborn, it doesn't sound like he's a soldier or, or militia. So I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think that's probably how Sydney's going to help is sending people back. Unless, you know, he's dead. <laughs> he can't do that. Um, but I, I saw pictures of Tom Wilson Jones. He was, Lauren says he was in the world without end. I don't think I saw that. But he looks very familiar to me. I could just look it up on IMDb, but I have too many tabs open as it is. Um, but I look at the pictures. He looked very familiar. Dickensian. Oh, okay. That must be where I've seen. I've only, I've only seen bits and pieces of Dickensian, but I liked it. Thanks, Shannon. Um, and he is a rival for Charlotte's effects, affection. So it's going to be Ben Lloyd Hughes and Tom Weston Jones are going to be Charlotte's rivals. Now, I've heard some say that um, they wonder if they're going to be rivals for Charlotte's affection 
my throat is really dry, so I'm trying to like take a breath before I talk. <clears throat> They're rivals for Charlotte's affection, but that they wonder if Charlotte will say no to both of them. Is that an ending you guys would be satisfied with? If she chose neither. Nope. <laughs> Marianne right away. Nope. <laughs> Lindsay says no. <laughs> and Sarah says nope. <laughs> Lauren says hell no. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't see, like, I've heard it the other way too, where people are upset that, you know, you just focus on her love interest. But I think there's always a happily ever after. Exactly. I, I agree, Sarah. And especially with Jane Austen, if, if they want to keep, and obviously this is no longer a Jane Austen uh, project but it still began with Jane Austen. And I think that to keep in line with that, to keep those fans happy who came to Sanditon because of Jane Austen, there has to be a happily ever after. I agree with you there. But I think too, it's not just about Charlotte gets the guy and then she's happy because she has the guy. It's not that. And I think that's why we love Sidlot so much is because look at how they both brought up the best in each other and they both challenged each other. And that's why they fit. That's why they were a happily ever after because of what, how they made each other better. And I think that that's what, that's what this happily ever needs to be. I think that if it's Alexander Colburn or Colonel Lennox, I think that they have to, it, she's going to go with the one who challenges her the most and pushes her to be their better person. Bed Lloyd Hughes, does he remind anyone else of um, the old suitor? A little bit of a stringer kind of guy. I feel like Charlotte likes them a little bit because like stringer's manly, right? He's, he builds things. Ben doesn't remind you of, of Leo Suter, really? I don't know. I think he does. <laughs> Maybe it's the hair, though. It, it could be the hair. Sarah and, and Lindsay flat out disagree with me. Nope, Ben does not remind them of Leo at all. Maybe it's his personality that I've seen. I've only, again, I've only seen him in one thing, and his personality in there is very... He was kind of like a quiet strength, and that's... Oh, great. I've seen the original Great Expectations. I've never seen the new one, Sarah. is um, Sarah says Ben is in Great Expectations. Is that, what year did that one come out? That had to have been recent, right? Recent-ish. 2012. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I, the one I saw before that was, um, oh my gosh, what's it? Ethan Hawke. No. Yeah, Ethan Hawke. That was the last Great Expectations I saw. So Lauren says, yes, looks like Charlotte's sister, Allison, will have more of a role this time around. Well, two's a company, three's a crowd. <laughs> that was the other thing. This Allison is not the same Allison we already saw, is it? They recast her. Of course, they don't ever say. No, they do say. They say that's Allison. In, in Sanitin, don't they? The brown haired girl who kind of looked like Rose Williams. <clears throat> I, that's what I thought too. When I saw her, I thought, well, get her brown hair and they will, they'll look alike. Yeah, they do. Cause it's when they go to visit, obviously it's when they go to visit the house that they point out that's Allison, but, <clears throat> but, um, I was a little surprised because in all the, all the times I gave Sanditon an ending in my own head, it was that Allison. So it was kind of like, oh, wow. Shannon says, Tom was a bad guy in Dickensian. He left Miss Havisham at the altar. Whoa. <laughs> well, I think, honestly, I think, and this is, this is why I was drawing the comparison between Ben and Leo. <laughs> Lindsay says, don't tell me that. <laughs> I think that it does say that he, Alexander's a mysterious resident with a complex family history. And I think the reason they're using those words is because that was what we liked about Sydney. He was a mystery and he was very complex. I think that's why they're using those words. But the other aspect is that Colonel Francis, they describe him as self-assured <clears throat> and a war hero. Sydney was also self-assured. I mean, he pretended he was. And he became the hero for Tom and his family. So I think that they're pulling all the best things about Sydney and putting them into these two love interests. But I feel like Charlotte may go for the war hero over the mysterious resident. Just because I feel like she likes him a little rougher around the edges, which sounds weird when I say it like that. Lauren says, oh no, he didn't. Um, do you mean in Dickensian, Tom did not leave Miss Havisham at the altar? Lindsay says, yes, but does he need to be fixed? 
I don't think she necessarily goes for those who get fixed. I think she leads towards those strong personalities who just become better because they have never had her in her life before, but now they do. Sue says, oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, Lindsay says she made Sydney a better man. Exactly. Yeah. But I think, I don't think he, she fixed him necessarily. I think that it was because they gravitated towards each other. And I think honestly, if you look at it, Sydney made her a better person too. And I think that's why they gravitated towards each other. I could see maybe, um, <clears throat> oh, Lauren says she was just joking. <laughs> Is that because you don't want to believe that our new love interest would ever do that to someone? I want the war hero. He is gorgeous, Lauren says. <laughs> he is a very good looking guy. <laughs> Sarah agrees with you, Lauren. Um, so we meet Allison Haywood, who is now played by Rosie Graham. <clears throat> and Allison is soon acquainted with the handsome and charming Captain William Carter. So <laughs> Lindsay wants Ben. I don't I think they're I really liked Ben in the one thing I saw him in, and I like I, I like his look. I wish that they would give us like headshots of them in costume. I hope Paula teases us with that at some point here soon. That would be great. <laughs> I don't know that she will, but I would really, really appreciate it if they could do that. Yeah, see? Lindsay agrees with me. Lauren says, what Lindsay they look related Rose and Ben. I don't know what that means. I was saying that Allison Haywood, who is Rosie Graham, um, she looks like Charlotte, if that's what you're asking. So I think that obviously they're hinting that Allison is going to fall in love with Captain William Carter. So maybe, maybe Colonel Lennox is not who Charlotte's going to go for because sister's going with him and it seems too matchy matchy. Lindsay says because they have dark hair and dark eyes, she's questioning. Um, oh, so, Okay. Other intriguing newcomers include Captain Declan Frazier, who is Frank Blake. Um, and I haven't, I've never seen, I haven't seen normal people, so I don't know who he is. But that's the, that's the other show they give him in. Um, a courageous character, if rough around the edges, and the striking and flamboyant Charles Lockhart. I feel like he's going to be a very good friend of, of Charlotte. That's played by Alexander Vlahos. He was in Versailles. Shannon said, I thought Alexander Vlahos was going to be the new love interest for Charlotte. They don't list him as that. It says that um, I'm reading right from the press release that Masterpiece put out, um, but it says that Alexander Coburn is a mysterious resident who is in contrast to Colonel Frank Lennox, who is his rival for Charlotte's affections. And then below when it's talking about Allison, it says that um, that other newcomers are Declan Frazier and uh, Charles Lockhart, who is Alexander Vlahos. He plays a Brionic artist who arrives to paint portraits of Sanditon's fashionable and wealthy residents. I don't know, describing him, I think he's too, as an artist, I don't think that's really going to be up Charlotte's alley. So I feel like that would be more of a, of a good friend to Charlotte. And I hope he is because I think she needs a good, sturdy, solid friend who's going to be honest with her about all things. Um, Lauren says normal people is great. You know, I've heard great things about that. Marianne says, I love him already. I assume you're talking about Alexander Vlahos. He's interacting with the fandom so much. I haven't seen any of his stuff. I need to, I, we've been working on this other podcast. So I have been kind of putting my time between two podcasts and not doing anything else on the internet. So it's, I need to spend more time on Twitter. Now that I'm off of vacation, I'll have to get back in my game and start talking with the cast and crew. Um, Lindsay says, I'm kind of glad our leads aren't huge names. That way, Rose Williams and Crystal Clark remain center stage. I agree with that. And I, that's another thing. Let's talk about Georgiana for a minute. I am really excited. You notice that, um, I always pronounce his name wrong. I always want to pronounce it Jayuda, but I don't know that that's how you pronounce the name. I feel like it might be, I don't know how to pronounce it. Jayetta James. His name isn't listed here. So I think he might be gone. Judah. Oh, it's J-Y-U-D-D-A-H. So I always thought it was Jayuda. But that makes sense. It's Judah. Um, <clears throat> see, I'm I'm a 
<laughs> northern Midwestern girl who has problems pronouncing words that look different <laughs> or names that look different. Um, but I think that I'm glad that they didn't say that there's a love interest for Georgiana. I'm actually glad that they didn't list one because I would like to see her just thrive on her own. That's true. He wasn't listed in the season one cast list either, Marianne. Um, so he could like, I'm hoping it is for Babington and Alexander Roach that um, they come back as supporting casts at some point. I, I do hope that. Cause I, I, I would like to see that, that Otis is okay. But the, the reason I'm glad that they don't give a lot of interest for Georgiana is because I want to see her really, really grow. I think that she went from Antigua and I think we talk about this. You're not going to see the episode I just recorded until two weeks from now, <laughs> but that is a, that's a Georgiana episode. It's all Georgiana. That's it. And so I talk a little bit about this in there, but Georgiana went from Antigua to London. Like she went from the turmoil of Antigua and releasing of the slaves and the dying of her parents to London, where she was sad and almost immediately met Otis and then to Sanderson where she hated. So I would like to see her grow on her own because Georgiana has so much potential and she has so much ability to become, and she's a little, she was pretty mature in the first one. So I think that I would like to see her grow outside of a relationship with a guy. Lauren says, I wonder who will be her guardian since she isn't quite 21. I know I was thinking that too, but that's another, that's another staple for why um, maybe they aren't going to kill off Sydney. Maybe he's just going to be her guardian from afar as he was for a lot of season one. That's a possibility that they'll keep him alive, but in some tortured form. Marianne says, unless he does die and Charlotte is named guardian. I don't think he would do that. I, Lindsay, was that supposed to say, Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yes. It was supposed to say, Ooh, I like that. <laughs> don't be sorry. You should see my, my text messages. There you get all messed up. Um, you know, if you think about some of Jane Austen's works, we have, um, I, I know we kind of, we kind, some people have seen Sydney as, um, Wickham or not Wickham. Um, oh my gosh. I'm so disappointed in myself right now. Willoughby. Jeez Louise. I don't think he's quite a Willoughby except for his end. Willoughby ended up with a woman he didn't love for money. And that was just, that was where his story ended. He mar he had to be stuck with this married woman who he did not love. And that's, that's canon for Jane Austen. And if you guys listen to my interview with Paula, she did say she liked the way it ended because it was canon to Jane Austen. Because it was realistic and Jane Austen was a realist. She, Paula, was totally fine with how it ended with him being married to someone else that he did not love for money. So I think it's a pretty strong case that he's not dead, that he just marries Eliza. Like Willoughby married that woman he didn't love. Because I think Willoughby genuinely loved Marianne. Um, but he couldn't marry her. And I, I think that there are all these pieces. Lauren says, sorry, I was reading. Lauren says, we just found out today they are looking for two babies to shoot in Sanditon. I wonder who the baby is for. How did you find that out, Lauren? Where did they, where did they announce that? But that is curious. Esther, probably. One of them was probably for Esther. Ooh, I wonder if one of them was for Clara. Let's talk about Clara a little bit. Ah, Marianne, we're on the same page. You and me, Marianne. It was on Instagram. Oh, that's another one I haven't been on enough. Man. Look at all the stuff I miss when I'm just recording and editing. I'm going to have to, my whole afternoon now is going to be spent. I do have to record another podcast tonight for, for uh, next week for you guys. But my whole, the rest of my afternoon outside of that is just going to be spent on Instagram and Twitter, looking up all the actors and, and people involved in Sanditon. I mean, that's, that's not a bad way to spend a day, right? So I do, I wonder if Clara is now, okay. We've talked about how they didn't announce Babington. Mark Stanley. They didn't announce. I know. I think it's, I think one of the babies has to be for Esther Lindsay. She said, I hope it's baby Babs. I, I think one of them has to be, you don't, that's the whole point of getting married back then is you have babies. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly certain. I'm pretty confident in saying one of them has to be hers. 
she's the uh, she's the only one who's i hope they don't get married another baby i think she's pretty tapped out with tom <laughs> and the other kids that they have um allison's not married charlotte's not married georgiana's not married so if they give one of them a baby and i know it's modern now to do that but I, there's no way that's gonna be charlotte's baby lauren you said a few people have said that i i think that that would be a huge huge mistake and they would they would lose a lot of viewers if they did that and i think they're very well aware of that <clears throat> and i think because paula's on this there's no way she's gonna let that happen because one it would be there would be no happy ending at all for charlotte if it was hers and it is really really not canon to jane austen at all and that's that's paula's specialty they asked her back for a reason so i think i don't think there's any way she would let that happen um <clears throat> but i think that um they didn't announce matthew needham's return either it doesn't mean he's not going to show up somewhere in season three maybe maybe the baby is clara's because i think i think that even though claire is not married it's more likely she has a baby than anybody else since we saw what she and edward did right before they were cast out of sanderson i didn't see any protection being used <laughs> so there's a very real possibility that could be Clara's. One of them is Clara's. And oh, it could be Edward. Maybe that's maybe that's Edward and Clara's storyline. Lauren says got to be either baby Denim or baby Babbers. And then Lizzie says, I hope not Clara. Yeah, I, it would be a bummer if it was Clara's. <clears throat> but I think that it's a reality of of that time with doing what she did. Uh, Marianne says she's thinking baby denim. Yeah, I think it's either going to be twins for Esther or one baby for Esther, one baby for Edward and Clara. It has to be, it's not the storyline I wanted for Clara or Edward, but honestly, I think I don't hate Clara or Edward. There, there wasn't the <laughs> the only villain in this whole story um, is Eliza, in my opinion. I think we've kind of discussed at length. That's true. That's very true, Lindsay. That's because they can't have them on screen very much. But even if you look at Tom and Mary's kids, how often were they seen? Very, very, very rarely. Lindsay said two babies for casting could still mean one baby filmed, which is accurate. They do that a lot. But I think they do that when they have to have the baby on set for so many hours. Lauren says they usually use two babies to alternate for filming. So it's probably only one person having the baby. Lindsay says, right. <clears throat> and that, that is a possibility. Again, I think it depends on when the baby appears. If it appears right away in season two, like bam, you have a baby. Or if it appears at the end of season three. And it depends on how much it'll be on screen, I think. <clears throat> but that's very, very possible. It's just one baby. Because I think... So the only person I actually... Marianne says, we know little Henry's back, but haven't heard anything about the daughters of, or baby James. Yeah, I think I, I, we may not see them. Maybe they'll be off at school. Maybe. Maybe Marianne or Mary realizes that she's got to keep tighter rein on Tom. Sarah says, I don't think baby James will be back. Why, Sarah, are you thinking that? Lauren says, apparently the baby has to be around for six weeks at a time at time of filming. Oh, so I wonder where that would put them. Now, did they say, I've heard two different answers for this. And so I just want clarification of any of you heard from Paula or, or Justin or anyone who is in the crew, high up in the crew. Did they say they are filming two and three together, like back to back? Not, not like mix and matching, but I mean, are they filming two, finishing and immediately jumping into season three? Okay. This is what the post says. Sarah says, yes, they did say that. Marianne says, yes, it was not. It's okay. That's what I thought it was, but I heard some people say no, and then I was like, well, maybe my information was wrong. Um, okay, so Lauren was saying, I, I said what Lauren said wrong. Lauren was saying, apparently the baby has to be around, the baby itself has to be around six weeks old at the time of filming. Um, that's what she was saying. I That was my fault. I, I said that wrong. Um, but that makes sense because they, they don't ever use newborns for a, a set. You, they can't, I think there's a law against using, I know it is in Britain, but I'm pretty sure there's a law against using brand new babies. So they uh, almost always, the babies, like there's been some shows 
there's been some shows where I've seen them, like, there's no way I could push something like that out of me because that is way too huge. <laughs> I guess it's not a newborn baby. Um, Lauren says it's being shot on the 12th of August. Okay. Well, that means that it took two months, two months to film the season two, roughly two months to film season three. That means that we might have to wait four months to get cast and crew interviews back, which would be a bummer. But hopefully they let me, I'm, I'm working with them. Hopefully they, we can get something assigned um, between uh, season two and three. That would be great. Done by December. Marianne says all filming is scheduled to be done by December. I think we'll probably, hopefully they'll be able to squeeze some in there. Well, I wonder if it's all filming itself or filming and editing, because this is supposed to come out in 2022, season two, right? <clears throat> so it just might be filming and editing will be done. Yes, that's what the building application said, Lauren says. Sarah says the episode with the six-week-old baby is being shot on August 12th. Oh, okay. All right, anyway, so back to Clara. I think there are no villains in the show other than Eliza Campion. She's the worst. So I don't see Edward and Sarah as villains, or Edward and Clara as villains. I see Clara as a broken girl who is made to go through horrible, horrible circumstances and life situations and had to be kind of resourceful and on the moment to live, to just live. And Edward, I mean, Edward could have been better than he was, but he was also completely broke and he learned to manipulate people to get what he wanted. So no one would know how, how bad he is. And honestly, how can you not like Jack Fox? So <laughs> that might be more of the reason I don't see Edward as a villain is because I love Jack Fox. Sarah says, I think Edward will redeem himself. 100%. I agree with you. 100%. And I think Clara will too, because I think that we'll see, well, I think that we were kind of made to see already that Clara just knew how to survive and that's it by any means necessary. I mean, I can't imagine being in those situations she was in and not living that way. So I think they'll both be able to redeem themselves. I was originally hoping it would be Crow and Clara because of that deleted scene. And maybe they would have gone that way, but Andrew Davies sort of put a twist <laughs> last minute on season one. So maybe they would have gone that way, but I don't think they're going to now. So the other thing I want to do is I want to go over um, the, the crew that they have signed on. They say that before I do that really quick, Rebecca says, in season one, they filmed the first three episodes and Ollie went to post-production editing while they filmed four and five with Miss Clark as director and finally Charles Sturridge came in to finish the series. Yep, I, yep, that's true. That's how they did it. That's what he told me they did. Um, so we have Justin Rung, Justin Young, who back, he wrote the first four episodes of the first season, or four episodes of the first season. He has developed a new series and he is now the lead writer and executive producer. Way to go, Justin. We are so glad to have you in there. I think he's, I have absolute faith in him. Um, and Davies, who originally created it, also returns to write and executive produce, but he's not the lead. I, I agree with you, Marianne. Marianne says, I love Justin Young so much. I'm totally on board with that. I think he does such great, great work. I told Ollie in the interview, I don't know if you guys watched the interview today with Ollie Blackburn, but I told him I hoped he would be back. And he gave me like a weird smirk. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I hope because he's not listed for season two. I don't think I'm just reading through it now, but um, Lauren says, I wonder if I'll be back for season three. Sarah says huge faith in Justin Young and Rebecca says Justin is amazing. I agree with all of those things. 100% of them. Um, so we have him. We have um, Colin, by the way, Janice, Ako, Ellen Taylor and Robin French are also writing for the series. And that's, I, that to me, that's, that's a great team. I think that that is a really excellent team. Um, the series producer is Rebecca Hederly, who sh she produced Casualty. And she's the series producer. The producers are Ian Hogan and Amy Rodriguez. Noticeably absent is Theo James's production company. And lead director is Charles Sturridge, who we all know from the end of season one. Love him. Love his work. I thought he did great. Um, with, oh no, I'm going to mispronounce his name. With Etho Shia. Hilton, uh, directing episodes four, five, and six. And then executive producers are Belinda Campbell and Tim Key for Red Planet Pictures. 
and Suzanne Sim Simpson for Masterpiece and Chloe Tucker for ITV BritBox UK. So those are all the cast and crew announcements that we have. Now I don't, it doesn't say, it says that Charles Sturridge will be the lead director with Ethel Shia as directing episodes four, five, and six, but that doesn't say Ollie's not in there. I mean, that's not enough in my opinion to um, direct two seasons. So I, I don't know. I think there's a chance Ollie might be back. Lauren says we have a great team, great writing team, I think. And Lindsay and Sarah agree. I do too. Marianne says, I think the writing team is great as well. Lauren says the writing will be great. Marianne says, I really hope Ollie is back. I should have invited him to this. <laughs> Although he probably would not have, probably was too busy. Um, but yeah, I agree. I completely agree. And I think that he is very, very aware too of the fandom. Again, I don't know if you guys all watched that, the interview I did with Ollie, but he is very aware of our fandom and he is grateful to our fandom. And he thinks, he did thank you guys too. I thank all of us rather. <clears throat> so I think that there's a very real possibility he might come back just because he loves he, he really enjoyed working on it. And I think he really, really did um, appreciate the fandom and what they did for him. So I think there's a very good chance. Sarah says, Ollie will be at SantaCon. I did see that. Yep. He's very in love with this group. Um, Sarah and Marianne, or Sarah, since um, you are the one who just went to SantaCon, if you want to say anything about SantaCon and you want to talk, I can let you talk. I'll, I'll ask you to come in and speak, or I can read what you type if you'd rather that. If you guys, you don't have to, but if you guys wanted to, you can feel free to do that right now. I saw Paula Byrne is going to be there too, right? Paula and Ollie, I don't know if you guys are announcing everybody, but I know that she announced that. So I figured it was pretty safe if I did. But yes, Marianne confirmed Paula will be there. Lindsay said, so Lindsay, Sarah, and Marianne, are you all involved in SantaCon? Lauren says, one of the writers was a part of TV show, The Great on Hulu. Oh, really? I heard oh, I, that's on my list. I have it in my queue. Um, but I haven't watched it yet. Marianne, Sarah, and Lindsay are all a part of Cinegon. Oh, cool. Um, Lauren, are you also? Uh, but seriously, if you, if you guys ever want to let us, Oh no. Okay. I will call in. Okay, Sarah, I'll let you, I'll watch for you to call in. Invite. <laughs> Okay, so it's your speaker now, Sarah. Hey guys, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. All right. Um, yeah, so SandyCon. <laughs> um, yeah, Ollie's gonna be there. Um, I don't know if you guys, you've seen all of our texts about SandyCon or not. Um, but just On to Twitter? Get, yeah, Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. Just to give you a rundown. Um, it's two weeks, first week is in London. March um, 13 to 19. Um, the actual conference is March 16 through March 18th. Um, you can come earlier in the week during week one and we will be doing some, you know, outings around London um, and doing Ooh. some exploring. Um, and then the actual conference with guest panels will be March starting March 16th with a welcome reception, but the actual panels will be on March 17th and 18th. And then the evening of March 18th, there will be a dinner um, where attendees can attend and mingle with everybody and meet some, um, hopefully some of the important guests um, as well. And then um, week one is taking place at the uh, Kimpton Fitzroy London Hotel. That's where the conference will be. And um, all of this, we have a website with all of this information as well um, at sandycon.org. And week two is in and around Bristol. Um, that is from March 19th to March 25th. Um, and we will be touring all the filming locations uh, that Sanditon used during season one and hopefully during the new seasons as well. Mm -hmm. um, like, like Brian Beach, like um, Bowood House, like Eiford Manor, um, the famous bridge where Charlotte has the chat with her papa. Um, also, um, Durham Park, 
um, just to name a few. Uh, and also Jane Austen's actual house. Um, Ooh. Going there as well. That excites uh, me. As well as uh, Chawton House as well. So um, all of this information is on our website, www.sandycon.org. Um, it has the cost breakdown uh, for attendees. You can attend week one all together or week two all together, or you can attend uh, daily during week one only. And um, this conference is unique because it's not like a regular, you know, Comic Con, like you guys know, maybe like through the Divergent Comic Cons or the other big blockbuster Comic Cons that happen. Um, ours is unique because nobody is making a profit off of this. This is all nonprofit. It is um, all of our committee is volunteering to plan this. And we are asking people when they sign up to pay conference fees and the proceeds from the conference fees will be, um, we will be making donations to three charities that are connected to Sanditon in some way. And so oh. we are actually giving back to these charities. We're not collecting any money. Nobody's getting paid. This is a private uh, closed event for Sanditon fans only. Nobody um, can come the day of and get a ticket and enter. Um, we are not selling tickets at the door. We are all asking all the attendees to pre-register online. Um, and so that that is how you will be able to get in. And it's all, it's a conference for Sanditon fans only. Okay. And it's worldwide. All the fans were anybody around the world who is a Sanditon fan and who has interacted with us on Twitter can, um, you know, attend if, if it works out for them financially and schedule wise. Um, but that's why it's our conference is unique. This is a, a fan event planned by fans for the fans. And it's more of a kind of like a big family reunion style. A lot of us have interacted on Twitter and um, Facebook and IG, but we haven't actually met in person. Oh, so wow. To, we've only met in person via Zoom, but we haven't really met in person physically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we want to be able to come together and meet each other face to face. Um, a lot of us have, you know, put, we've, we've drummed up, you know, deep personal friendships and we've gone through so much over the two years that we've been fighting for this show. Um, so it's, we feel like it's now time to come together and meet everybody and put names with faces and, um, you know, enjoy each other's company and, you know, talk about the show that we love so much. And, you know, what better way to do that than at a fan event? Um, yeah. That only for Sanditon fans. So that's kind of what it is in a nutshell. <laughs> you guys have a podcast out now too about it, right? We did a podcast. Um, I can put the link up on Twitter again. Yeah. Uh, we did it um, on the edutainer and it gives us, you know, tells you a little bit more information about it. But again, all the information is on our website, www.sandycon.org. Oh, so the podcast isn't like a regular thing you're doing every week. It was just one no, episode. It was, not. it was a one oh. episode. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like every week you guys are going to be talking about Santa Con. I'm like, oh, sweet. I want to hear that. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> then Lindsay said, we are very new to the podcast we thing. We are very new to the podcast thing. Yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, you know, my birthday is March 12th, just saying. So maybe, okay, well, maybe yeah, I can convince my husband to do some stuff for me there. Some of us are coming on March 12th. So, you know huh? what? Go for it. The more the merrier. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> so if you guys have any questions about that, where can they find you on uh, Twitter? If they have any, if they're just following me, they might not know who, what you yeah, are. If you guys have questions about SandyCon, you can reach out to us on Twitter at SandyCon2022. We do have an email address, event.organizer at SandyCon.org. And we'll happily answer any and all questions. There you go, people. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's that was about SantaCon, and that's something new that's coming up. So the um, I, I love that there's events coming out of this. Who knew when Sanditon One first came out that all of this stuff 
was going to come out of it. There's so many cool things that are popping up. Um, not, <laughs> I'm not saying my, my podcast is so cool, but the podcast started just on a whim where I just wanted so much more because I was going through Sanderson withdrawals and I just wanted more. So I decided on a whim one day, you know, I'm going to reach out to all these cast and crew and I'm going to start a podcast. And I, that was how the podcast got started. Obviously, SantaCon has been in the works a little longer than my podcast has been, but that's come out of it. The Sanderson Sisterhood has its own house or not house store with its products and all this stuff. So, I mean, just how creative our fandom is, is pretty amazing. Uh, Sarah just said SantaCon 2022, March 12th to 26th, 2022, week one, London, week, week, week two in Bristol. So I think I, I, and the other thing I love too, is talking to the cast and crew that I've been able to talk to, how appreciative they are of this fandom. Like they, it, it's really easy. I'm sorry. I'm still stumbling over my words here, but it's, it would be really easy for an actor or actress and we're not naming names right now, <laughs> but it would be really easy for an actor or actress to just not value not value any any effort or any love that the fandom has had for them. I mean, you see Gilmore Girls, for instance, is another show that I watch and I love. And we our other podcast um, that's Fan and Family Chats, we talk, we've talked with some of the casting crew members there. That show ended in 2007. And when they still come on and talk, they're so, they are appreciative. But that's years later. That's like, that's 20 years later almost. And so for the people of this, of this fandom, the actors and actresses, it would be easy for them. <laughs> it would be easy for them to, one, not care about the fandom, but two, to just be like, yeah, whatever, you're just fans. And I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do whatever. But the people in this show, like Ollie, like Kate, like, like even when I reached out to Rose Williams' agent and, and Chris Marshall's and Annie Reed's, like they're all. And Jack Fox, I mean, I haven't even interviewed, interviewed him yet, but he's done stuff with Santa, with Santa's and Sisterhood, and they just really love this fandom. As much as we love putting our efforts into rallying behind the show, they love the fandom so much. And it's really, really, it's, I just, what's not to love about this? Lindsay says, the new cast seems very thankful. Yeah, I, I've heard that. <laughs> Lauren, I'm not going to read yours. <laughs> <laughs> but we know what you're saying. Because honestly, I still do like him. So <laughs> uh, Shannon says one word, a bad wig. I don't know what that means. I feel like I should, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, But I think that all these, and Crystal Clark, I mean, she interacts with the fandom on a regular basis. She's an actress. She has been on numerous things. She's been on stage with Annie Reed. She's been in Sanditon. And she's still regularly, oh, oh, <laughs> you got it now. Um, Sarah, I was actually going to, I'm going to email you guys afterwards. Sarah, if you, I was going to email Marianne because I've, I've been in contact with her through email. If you want to give me yours? I'd like to have it. I was going to reach out to you after, after we do this live and uh, see if we can get something going. Um, Lindsay says she needs a bigger story. Georgiana, 1000% yes. Absolutely. Um, she needs so much more. And I would love to see Georgiana have a maturing and a huge growth. Part of me, like that was my issue. I'm glad that they aren't doing a time jump two years ahead of time. Um, because that was going to be my sadness there is we wouldn't be able to see Georgiana go through growth. I think still jumping ahead nine months, which is probably why they're looking for a baby. Cause you know, nine months send it to end with a wedding, just throwing that out there. Um, but, um, the, the issue I have with the two year time jump is we wouldn't be able to see Georgiana go from where she was at the end of Sanditon all the way forward to where I hope she's going to end up because it cannot be denied that and it's not even her fault, but in Sanditon one there, uh, she is immature. She's naive. She has attitude issues, but it's, it's not all again, it's not all her fault. But she does have that, and I think that she can ch if she can channel all that in to something that is it, that is cloaked in maturity, her storyline is gonna be out of this world. And I really hope that they honor her and give her that because Georgiana needs that. Because even with how immature she was and how naive she was, we have all fallen completely in love with her. She needs 
to be treated better. <laughs> Lauren says they're going to be shooting at Lay Court, which was used for Bridgerton and Poldark. Ooh, you know, Poldark is one every single person I've talked to has said, I need to watch. And I agree. I need to watch it. I just haven't been able to get into it. Uh, like, Not that I haven't been able to enjoy it, but I haven't been able to even turn it on. But that is because that's Turlo, right? Turlo's in that. And I think I would love anything he does, if I'm being completely honest, because I seriously love Turlo. I think he is. <laughs> he and Babington were actually my two favorite male characters on Sanditon was Turlo and Mark Stanley. I love those characters. Well, Arthur and Babington. Killing Eve. No, I didn't know Trilla was on Killing Eve, Marianne. But I've heard of Killing Eve. Um, and Sarah did confirm that, yes, Trilla plays a bad guy, though. But still, it's Trilla. He's great. He probably does it well. He probably plays a bad guy really well. And I think, too, that there's something that, especially for the American fandom, um, I think that we are used to actors and theo actually brought this up on an interview we're used to actors and actresses getting into a show or a movie and becoming like family with the people there and then it's like oh yeah let's hang out let's do this let's do this but then you talk to a lot of the british actors like a lot of the british actors and they say well no i just went in there i did my job and i went home because that's how they work and even with if you look at downton abbey with um dan stevens when his character okay i'm just gonna say this because i was worried that I might give away a spoiler if any of you just started watching Downton Abbey, but you know, it's been off the air for a while. But when he died, it was because he said, all right, I'm done doing this now. I have other things I want to do. So I'm going to end my contract. And they killed him off to end his contract. So, I mean, this is, it's very, very common in British TV and movie for them, one, not to be like super attached to the people on the show. Yes, you get along. Yes, you like, you have to click in order to have chemistry. I mean, that's just how it works. So if you don't have chemistry, you have nothing. But I think in American TV and film, there's this this idea that everyone has to be really close friends and everyone has to be like, even after the show, even after the movie, you all have to like call each other and hang out. Even if even if that's not really how it is, that's how we as fans think about it. And of course, I'm generalizing. I understand a lot of my listeners are from America and you may disagree with me, but I think that a lot of it still is, I think there's a lot of accuracy to that. And there's interviews where people, actors and actresses have talked about that. But Theo James specifically has talked about how no, we just go in there and we do our jobs and then we go home because, and because he had been asked, um, how was it to work with your wife on this show and be at odds and not like her? And he's like, well, because my wife understands I'm an actor and I don't actually hate her. And that was why he's like, that's why when we're done with our show, we go home and we turn off all things about that show because it's just a show and it's not who we are. So I think that's another reason why it's hard for us when cast seem callous about leaving a show or seem cold or are cold rather it didn't seem cold that was a really cold exit but <laughs> um so i think i think that's another issue i i know i talk about about theo and sydney a lot here but i mean honestly we all love sidlock so i think that's natural so who else do we hope is coming back or do you guys have anything else that you want to say about um the newcomers, the new season. I think it's I think it's heading in a good direction too. Just the little tiny snippet they gave us. We've got militia staying in Sanditon. We've got new families coming to Sanditon that are not militia. We've got apparently filming in Antigua and filming here in Sanditon. Not here, in Sanditon. Sarah says Mrs. Griffiths needs to come back. I agree. Um, but the Bol we know that the Beaufort sisters will not be there. I think we found out pretty early on they weren't coming back. I know that I think that's why we found out pretty early on because they were sad that they weren't in it. Marianne, they, Marianne said they were so sad. Um, Lindsay said, I'm hopeful and excited for this storyline. I, I agree with that. And I think that there's, I think that there's a certain sort of validation of that hope that it's going to include more of just Georgiana in the London world, but Georgiana in the world where she came from. I think there's a hope to that too. And I'm, I'm excited to see where she came from because that's a storyline I've been, I don't know about you guys, but I've been very curious of that backstory of Georgiana specifically. And I think we do talk about that in the last, I don't know if you guys watched the last podcast we put out about Georgiana and Otis. I think we talked about that a little bit in there. Lindsay said, we saved and we saved Sanditon. Yes. Um, and Rebecca says, Georgiana will most likely live with Tom and Mary if Mrs. Griffiths disappears. That's probably true. I think that 
by proxy, Tom will probably be guardian, if anything. I doubt that Sydney would give up that charge, though. Lauren says there is a new... There is a new other character joining. Was not in press release, but was on the agent tweet. Who is that, Lauren? Lindsay wants Crow. Me too. I mean, Crow was awesome. <laughs> his lines were almost all of my favorite lines. I like to use his "I'm in complete control" when I talk to my husband. Sometimes, I think it. I think it works. I don't think he thinks it works, but I think it works. Shannon said, I think Charlotte will be very different from the last we saw her. Absolutely. I think that this heartbreak is going to help grow her. I think it's going to help transform her into, um, I don't want to keep saying the word mature over and over and over again, but I think that even S Charlotte needs to, I think Sydney opened her eyes a lot to who she was versus who she needed to be and looking at the world a different way. But I do think that she still has some learning to do. And so I hope that this heartbreak has kind of pushed her in that direction. Lauren says that the new character is Sandy McDade. Is that the actress's name, Lauren? Or is that the character name? Rebecca says, Crow and Arthur are two are the two wise men in different ways. I agree. It's okay. So Sandy McDade is the actress's name. I wonder, I wonder what they're going to do there. Because they already have a cast full of women, which is good. Is good, but it's weird to not see it balanced. Oh, I suppose there's new. There's a bunch of new men. One, two, three, four. What five, six guys that are new? Do we only have one new girl? <laughs> that doesn't seem very evened out, does it? But I have faith that it's going to be great. And I think I said from the very beginning that, you know, it was Justin and and the writers who made us fall in love with Sydney in the first place. They are certainly going to make us fall in love with another character within double the amount of time. I mean, we're, it's going to happen. Sarah says the writers know how to upset how upset we are with how season one ended, so they will do everything to make it better. And I have complete faith in our writing team. Excited. Lindsay says I'm sure more cast to come. Oh, absolutely, I think so too. Lauren says we have Allison. She is new. Yep, Allison. Is, I think that's the one girl that's new, isn't she? Sarah says, yes, more cast to come. Rebecca says, Fred Robinson is not on the list either. Neither is Leo Suter or James Stringer. And Sandy McDade. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Sandy McDade. Um, do they say what character she's going to play, Lauren? Seriously, I need to get back on Twitter and Instagram. I feel so out of the loop. <laughs> it's kind of supposed to be my job to be in the loop. <clears throat> but for those of you who are curious, I did reach out to Paula Byrne. And I asked if they had like a website or something that they could direct me to where I could keep updated on the current cast and the cast announcements and stuff. And, or if I should just continue to follow what Sanderson Sisterhood said. And she said that a good bet is sticking with what the Sanderson Sisterhood puts out. So if you're ever curious, Lauren said, no, they don't, they don't. She wasn't even on the press release. Gotcha. Lindsay said, I wonder if she will be family of the complex background for Ben's character. That would be good. That would be it. That's a good idea, I think. Sarah says at least half the original cast wasn't announced. Um, well, I, I think probably about half. Chris Clark, Rose Williams, Chris Marshall, Kate Ashfield, Turlo Coventry, Annie Reed, Kevin Eldron, uh, shoot, Scarborough. Whoa, what was his name? What is Fuchs' name? Adrian, Adrian Scarborough. Thank you, Marianne. I'm having too many brain issues right now. And then we've got, obviously, Lily Sikorsky, Charlotte Spencer, Turlo. That's 10. That's about half of the cast, yeah. 10 of the main cast. Sydney didn't... Um, sorry, I gotta get caught up. Okay, so Lauren says, or Mrs. Griffith type character. That's true, she could be that too. Sarah said they did announce half, but lots more were not announced. Agreed. Shannon said, Sydney did the same thing to Charlotte, what Eliza did to him. I think Charlotte will be a bit colder and a bit less of an open book. Um, I don't, I don't think I'd agree with that fully. Guarded, I think she would be. Yeah, Lindsay, I agree with that. Lindsay said she'd be guarded. I don't think Sydney did what Eliza did to him. I think Eliza just was like, oh, I'm dropping you. Found somebody better. I think that Sydney 
was broken to do what he did to Charlotte. I think it was probably, it smacked of him of, this is what's done to me and I'm doing it to someone else that I'm in love with. I think he probably felt that way. But I think that he did it out of necessity to save his family from the poorhouse. And I think Charlotte understood that. I think she understood that family is first. So I don't think it's the same thing. And if you're just looking at it from the very basic standpoint of married for money, yeah, he did. But I think that what Eliza did was much more cold because hers was purely, this guy has more money and he wants me, so I'm going to leave you for him because he's better than you. But Sydney was, I don't want to marry her. I don't want to leave you for her, but I feel I don't have another choice. And he was open about that. Um, but I, I, I think she will still be an open book, but I think that Guarded is, uh, or, yeah, a bit less of an open book, I mean, but I don't think she'll be colder. I think she will be more guarded. I think that Charlotte will come on the scene watching more than sharing. Kind of kind of being a little more like Sydney was, where he Sydney just watched her. I think that Charlotte is going to be less quick to speak her mind and more quick to just watch until she fully understands the situation and then speak. Uh, Lindsay said, I wonder what the issues are with Sanditon. Tom Parker is supposed to still have issues. Well, I think it's still probably getting the money, and it's only nine months later. He still has to get all the materials. He's got to get the money. The militia moved into town, so I imagine it's kind of hard to work on buildings when there's I mean, militias aren't small, so it's probably hard to continue to work on buildings as um, the militia haven't camped because he also, remember, he wanted to make this better than Brighton, better than any other seaside resort. He wanted it to be opulent. He wanted it to be um, elite. He wanted the rich to want to be there. And I imagine with the militia there, it's kind of hard to make it look a little more ritzy. That's my guess, anyway. Uh, Rebecca says, in my book, Sidney Parker is Sanditon's hero. What if he, what he did was save Tom and his family? I, I'd, I'd agree with that. That's why I don't want him to die. Because, I mean, I know people have issues with what Sidney did. And I know there's a lot of people like, well, you know, he shouldn't be back with Charlotte, even if he does come back, even if he does leave her, because he just abandoned her. But even Charlotte says, when he <laughs> tries to be open with Charlotte, Charlotte says, you can't say that. You've made her a promise. You have to stay with her. You have to make her happy. Even Charlotte gave him the approval to go do it because she understood. And I think, honestly, although it would have broken her as much as it broke Sydney, I think Charlotte would have made the same choice, especially back in that time. Um, so I agree with you completely, Rebecca. I think I think San I think Sydney made the choice. I don't think it was the only choice. I think there was Babington and Lady Susan that somebody should have thought to appeal to, to help pay for the town, especially when Lady Susan hinted that Prince Regent was going to be there. Why didn't anyone you hit up that? So I, I don't think it was his only option. I think he thought it was the only option he had, though. Lauren said, looks like Santa may not be fully built. That's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because in nine months, I mean, that was a long way to go. And then the militia took over. Not took over, but I mean, when a militia moves into town, militia's in the town, so. And I think Tom will probably still be frustrated that it can't be as opulent as he wants it to be because the militia is there. So, I mean, that's, that's just my, again, that's just my guess. I'm not, I could be wrong there. Um, Lindsay said, so where is PR? We didn't get that cast announcement. What do you mean? We did get a cast announcement. Oh, you, we didn't get the Prince cast announcement. Yeah. Um, I think they're probably going to hold that one pretty tightly until the end. So that either means A, they have someone really good. <laughs> And they want to sort of hold out the carrot on a stick for us, or he doesn't appear until season three and they don't have him yet. I know that they said that that announcement was coming, but I'm guessing that's why it hasn't come yet. Again, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just basically flying by the seat of my pants at all times. So, um, Rebecca said, if Sydney disappears or dies before he marries E, there'll be no money to be rebuilt. That's true. So I think there is a lot, a lot to to support the claim that he's alive. He's just with Eliza, which is just it's just. And I think honestly, I would rather that than him die. I don't want to marry to Eliza because she's a horrible, horrible, horrible person. Ruth Kearney, we like you. We just don't like your character. Um, but I think that um, I think it'll be pretty, pretty hard to kill him off at this stage, unless he does die and they don't have money and that's Tom's new problems. And then Lady Susan and Babington have to step in. Maybe that's why Esther is back in Sanderson because Babington has given him money in the wake of Sydney's death. I don't know. 
there are so many possibilities. I mean, they wrote this so well that there are so many different directions this could go. So you just have to watch to know. So there are two characters we haven't really talked about yet. Three. Well, four. <laughs> Five. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's uh, Esther Denham we've talked a little bit about, but not entirely. There's Annie Reed, who plays Lady Denham, we haven't really talked a ton about. Um, and then there is Edward. We haven't really talked a ton about him other than it might be, he might be having a baby and he's redemptive. And then there's, um, Kid Ashfield, who is Mary Parker and Chris Marshall, who's Tom Parker. So we haven't talked a lot about those. I think that Tom is going to be as Tom ever was. I don't think he's really going to learn anything. He's a, he's older. He's set in his ways. I think that he's just, he is where he's at. I think that Mary is going to be a little more cautious with him in the future, more watchful. And more on top of things. I don't think she's going to be shy anymore about, hey, listen, I know you know you can tell me things, but I'm telling you, you need to share things with me. So I think that she'll be a more of a force, I hope. Um, Lindsay said, I'm excited. Paul says it's even better than season one. Marianne says, me too. If Justin Young wrote those beautiful words in season one, he will kill it this time. I agree. So does Sarah. Um, and then Edward, I think, because he's got that beard now. And it does, you know, on our page, I kept writing um, Calvary <laughs> instead of Cavalry. I don't know why I was, I was not writing the right word there. It was a, a big, <laughs> it was a struggle for me, apparently. Um, but I'm wondering if Edward does join the Cavalry. Because he's got, I mean, he showed up with a beard and then Paula put out all that stuff about Cavalry and, and, um, um, how men of the cavalry dressed and how sideburns and the facial hair was really in because of the cavalry. So I'm wondering if that's part of it, or if we just find him in, unless like um, Esther finds him in the, the poor streets and he's all, he's not clean shaven because he has no money. So she rescues him, brings him back to Santa Fan and that's whatever. But there's no way Lady Denham's letting him back in the house. There's no way. <laughs> um, Let's see. Sarah said mustache now. He shaved. Yes, but he did start with a beard. Lindsay says, no pressure, Justin. <laughs> Marian says, shaved his beard. And Lauren says, yes, he did. It has a stash and sideburns. Yes, but he did start with the beard. So um, I'm curious if that means he was found on the streets or if he's in the militia. I'm very curious about that. I really just, I'm really just very, very curious about this whole season. I really want to know how it's going to play out, what direction it is. Like, I have all these theories. I have so many theories. But not all of them can be true. <laughs> yes, we do need behind-the-scenes pictures as soon as possible, Lindsay. As soon as possible. And they're pretty good about sharing those, too. I think that once filming wraps, they'll probably share some more. <laughs> Lindsay says now. Not as soon as possible, right now, right this second. So if any of you cast and crew are watching this live podcast or listening to this live podcast right now, put them out right now. It's not an order, just a really forceful request. Marianne says, I wonder how quickly they will air the two seasons with each other. Lindsay says, just for me. <laughs> so apparently you just, Lindsay's asking for you to just send it to her, but we're asking for everybody. <laughs> um, Marianne, my assumption is that they'll make us wait um, like a standard season is my assumption. I think that season two will likely air while season three is still being edited. I think, I feel like season two will come out in January. And if it, if filming wraps in December, they will be um, still editing season three. So I feel like, um, I feel like season two will come out like January, like it did with the first, at least in the U S it came out in January. I don't, when did it, does anyone know when it came out in Britain? I know it came out in January here in the U S and then I assume again, um, you know, what happens when we assume <laughs> hopefully I'm not doing that. Um, I, I assume that it'll be another, maybe season three will air in August in Britain and then January, 2023 in the U S but I heard that it's coming out in the U S first this time rather than later. So who knows? But I do I do think that it'll be a standard wait time from season two to season three. I don't think they're going to put them out any closer together. Plus, I mean, it keeps the anticipation up, right? <laughs> oh, 
Well, what better way to keep the anticipation up other than making us binge watch it on repeat so it doesn't end and then wait impatiently for the next one to come out. Um, Lauren says, the newspapers usually catch them filming so behind the scenes can be soon. That's true. Lindsay says, I can't wait to hear Roos' beautiful music. Oh, I love that music. Anyone else just run that soundtrack while you're working in your house or doing whatever you do? That was actually when I first started this podcast, as I reached out to all the cast and crew, and as I did all the promotion and all the edits that we do and all the images for this podcast, that was just on repeat. I love it. Uh, Marianne said she heard that as well about U.S. coming first. And it did air August 2019 in Britain, January 2020 in the U.S. Rebecca says, since Masterpiece is financing this, the series will likely be inserted in Masterpiece's rotation of show. I agree. Shannon says it will be on BritBox. Is this supposed to be first? Sarah said, I heard that too, or maybe it's, it'll air at the same time. I think that's what I heard. That it'll air at the same time. Just, I think the point was that it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't come out later than the British season because it is being funded by Matt. I mean, it is ITV and BritBox too in conjunction with Masterpiece, but because Masterpiece has a hand in it this time, I think it'll either, I, I believe I read, it, it, I read that it'll either come out at the same time, which is what I believe I read, but it also could be a kittens coming out first, but I'm pretty sure they come out at the same time. Shannon said before ITV. Lindsay said frequently, yes, she did that with the music. And Shannon said it would be on BritBox before ITV. Lauren says, yes, ITV will be the last masterpiece of BritBox will be first. Marianne says, I hope we can all watch it together. Hey, maybe we should do, um, it's, it's hard though, because we tried in our other podcast, we watched the show and um, the finale aired recently and we were trying to do a live podcast while we watched it. But we had to turn it up. We had to just leave two of us on there because <laughs> it was really hard to focus on the show while doing the podcast. So, um, but I would like to, it would be kind of cool to watch it all together. That would be fun. If we could all turn it on at the same time and we could have a podcast going where we can react to each other, maybe over text rather than, um, rather than talking. Um, but I don't know if you guys know about this. This is a, there's an app called clubhouse. There's a gentleman from Gilmore girls who does it. And they all watch episode of Gilmore girls at the same time. Their um, TVs are quiet. So you can just hear the TV, but the, the, chat doesn't hear it and then you can talk together while it's happening and then afterwards you get in a big group and you discuss it maybe that's what we'll do after the end of it maybe we'll just do a live stream oh i agree Lindsay. she said too distracting for our first watch and that's what we found when we did watch the finale together <laughs> it was it was just too much because you want to catch everything so i think what we'll do actually when it airs i think right after it airs we'll do a live podcast so everyone can get together and talk about their feelings right away and then, um, it, that Lindsay, that was what I was going to say next. <laughs> um, Marianne said she'll need to pay attention. Mary, but Lindsay said a rewatch would be good. That's what I was thinking of rewatching it and then having a response to, but I think we'll probably do a live the, within the next 30 minutes after it was done to make sure everyone can watch it. Or maybe we'll do it the next day because there's four different time zones in the U S so I think that we covered all the cast news that we have. I think we covered all the crew news that we have. I think we talked about what we'd like to see, what we'd like to do. We talked about SantaCon. Is there anything else you lovely ladies would like to discuss? Maybe we can start uh, Sanderson Brotherhood. We need to get that going. Maybe I'll force my husband to watch it. He can, uh, <laughs> he can watch more than just the bathtub scene. To be, to be very clear, he didn't intend, she doesn't intentionally just watch the bathtub scene. It just happened that every time I did a rewatch, he would come in the room no other point in time other than when the bathtub scene was on. He's like, what, what is this that you keep watching? <laughs> there are a few brothers. Yes, but we need to get them their whole movement. We need to get them out big. Is there anything else you guys would like to talk about? Or anything else you want me to know? Maybe there's something that I don't know since I've been an internet hermit since I went on vacation two weeks ago. <laughs> my vacation started on the 30th of June and I didn't start, I didn't get back into my game until last Monday. So it was two weeks I was out. Lindsay says new cast is bringing their own following to the series. That's right. Yep. I'm going to, they aren't huge names, but I mean, a lot of them are on British shows that are niche shows. And they, they, those niche shows have a big loyal fan base. Oh. 
All right, I'll give you guys a minute or two to, to let me know if there's anything else I should know or anything else you want to talk about. I just remember, guys, um, with my podcast, there's one thing that I have heard from a couple agents. Um, I'm not going to say names because I don't want to throw them out there, but a couple of them have given an indication that um, they want our fan base, our audience, or not our fan base because our fan base is pretty huge, but our audience to be at a higher level at higher numbers of downloads. So if you guys watch this podcast, please remember to subscribe, to rate and to share um, so that we can get you, we can be more enticing as um, uh, to get interviews. And like I said, I'm working with the production team. They requested that I, they reached out to me and requested that I go through them now only for cast interviews. I can't, they requested that I don't go to the casting crew themselves, but that I go through this production team. So um I know that it's going to be kind of hard to get cast interviews and crew interviews now as they are currently filming and they don't want to detract from that. But the more our numbers are up, the more we'll be taken seriously as a media or press and the more willing they would be to schedule us um, cast and crew interviews. So just remember to, to, and you guys have been great at sharing this stuff on Twitter and I I appreciate you guys. I appreciate every single one of you who watches every week. Um, And even those who reach out to me, let me know what they think on the podcast and interact with me through email. I love that. I love reading those and I am going to respond to those very soon. I promise there's three in there. I haven't responded to yet, Um, but I do see them. I did read them and I will be responding to them. And I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate you. I know that I say we a lot, but this is my podcast and it's, I'm the owner of this podcast. I'm the owner of our Facebook group, but I do have a team that helps me with the Facebook group. Um, So that's where the we comes in a lot is I have a team that helps run that group. Um, but if you guys could just remember to subscribe, to like, to share, the more people will get watching this, the more seriously we'll be taken. Um, and the more content I can give you guys that you really want to see, because I know that you guys more than hearing me talk, I know that you guys, you guys want to know what the actors and the, the crew has to say. Um, so I think that's, I think that's all we've got. We've been on here for almost an hour and a half. And, um, I thank you guys for talking with me. I like doing these lives. I, I hope that we can get more interaction. I hope that we can do more of them. It looks like we might be doing more of them because the interview segment has got to be taken out unless any of you want to be interviewed anytime. We're going to try to get a SantaCon one going here. So that might take the place of our next interview spot. So on that note, thanks guys for listening to Sanders and Chronicles live and watch out for our next podcast next week, which is going to recap episode five, which is one of my personal favorites. I don't even need to rewatch it because I already know all there is to know about episode five including those looks. All right. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.